Hey there, this is Paul AK Motors and you're about to watch the replay for the full project breakdown Vada Moto and I did for our song Color Ringtone back in January on my Twitch page. But there's one thing I want to get out of the way before we move on with the rest of the video. So this breakdown was actually meant to go up on YouTube much earlier than this, like the day after the stream, but something happened. Twitch, in its infinite wisdom, thought it was a good idea to flag our own song for copyright infringement on the VOD and subsequently muted the song on the part when we played it once prior to the breakdown for all of you to enjoy. Now, that in itself wouldn't be a problem except for two reasons. One, Twitch has actually muted more than two minutes beyond the song length, and uh, two, Later on in that same stream, we did a little bit of music feedback and to prove a few points, I used other people's music, which go figure, it's copyrighted and they didn't flag that. Uh, the only muted color ringtone, which again is our own song. The day after the stream, I appealed the claim and guess what? It's still not resolved after a month and a half, which brings me to assume they're not gonna do anything about it. So I thought, might as well get this video out while it's still relevant and I'll just fill in the blanks at the beginning with some voiceover. It's gonna be better anyway. So, at the beginning of the breakdown, Vitamode and I just talk about how the song came to be, what brought us to make uh, a track that's themed around phones and ringtones. So, last year in 2021, fresh off my No Limits remix compilation, which Vitamode was involved in, he basically DM'd me and said, I think our styles would work great, let's make a collab. And I obviously couldn't agree more, so uh, we were off to the races, we exchanged a few IDs, and then I came up with a melody off of that, which went on to become the main motif in the final song. And around that same time, Chime, who runs Rushdown uh, said to us, hey guys, there's this thing we're doing called Color Base Volume 3, you want in? <laughs> and um, the rest is history. From there onwards, this song actually moved pretty fast, like we got it done in a couple months or so, and there's actually a few times where I worked on the song live in previous streams of mine, and that's pretty much it. The audio from the vault returns at the time where I was breaking down the sound design for the chiptune motif, so I'll leave you with that. Timestamps are in the description. See you around. So with the pitch thing, get up more like moving pitch thing, vibrato if you will, <clears throat> gives it a more like joyful uh, like vibe, stuff like that, and then he has a shit ton of, of effects, <laughs> without any of the effects it would sound like this. And uh, by the way, I left the aliasing artifacts on purpose. So, so you see all this, this all, this is all rubbish here, but uh, by maintaining that, <clears throat> we get like this alias, like, bad quality vibe to the sound, which is sort of what we're looking for with the chip, with, with the chiptune vibe, so the one case where aliasing is, is actually useful, is, it, it's, pr it's probably here. <laughs> <clears throat> so, and uh, with all of the, the effects, which is a disperser, a crusher, and uh, the main EQ, and another EQ, an OTT to compress things down, light dimension expander, some delay, reverb, and then another EQ. Can you release this on Rushdown on a color base volume 3 comp? Yeah, you should have said that like two days ago, though. Then it would still be relevant. <laughs> and then basically what I did is just I bounced one of these like square waves but without the effects and with the reverb and I bounced it and I reversed it so it's like a yeah, the classic trick yeah. and then I faded in the EQ effect so it went from like full sounding and like narrowed down to the radio EQ Marps. Dun, dun. Biggest Tom fail in existence. My my markers are just beautiful, aren't they? Get that <clears throat> group, uh, group going in there. Bam. Bam. Main thing here was just to get this down. That head bang in there. And then get the melody to be recurring there. One of the main things we wanted to do, like, straight away from, like, when we started talking about the curl, I was like, we wanted to go straight into the drop. Like, yeah. That was the first idea apart from the melody. Crossbow Fluid with Honk the Automaton. Right, so where's the F in this? 
<laughs> I haven't seen this yet. This should be. This should be fun. Okay. There's the F. I should probably, Perfect. I should probably record this at some point. <laughs> like, yeah, we'll, do, we'll do the VIP version. <laughs> Have this on the on the VIP. Oh, the tension! <laughs> Automaton build up in ultra normal sample by calling it. <laughs> and uh, as you're noticing, the drop is just like 25 seconds in, so it's just like. 16 bars of intro. We didn't need like that long of an intro to establish this. It was already there. And it was like, okay, we're heading straight into it. Very functional in a way. These vocals are from Kara, sample pack. And these layers are um, a squip growl from Hypernova. And one more bass from Hypernova. Or I think it's a su this is Supernova, or the and this one is also Supernova. So you got those three. And the the fourth uplifter from Hypernova also I think. This is just like so many sample pack sounds. I, I like uh, it speeds up my workflow so much to like use my own samples. It does. Like I have my own sample, my own personal sample pack, and just. Like I was working on something earlier today. It was like a transy sort of thing, and just chucking in things is like so easy rather yeah. than just making things from scratch. And we're uh, teasing some sounds from the drop. Uh, GM Pro Music, by the way, thank you so much for that follow. <clears throat> so, so we've got some vital uh, grounds already. These are from the beginning of the first drop. We got those. So already the motif in, in the first drop. And by the way, uh, Oz for launch padding. <laughs> Are you five for launch padding? I think it was. Thanks so much for that follow. And another one from It's Xylo Kill. So many new follows. Welcome everybody to Moto's Live. By the way, let's check. Thirty people watching, pretty much. But I'm, have you ever have you ever had this kind of viewership? No. <laughs> I, I've never, I've never had this before. This, this is six. So yeah. <laughs> Thirty people say hi to Vital Note now. <laughs> What's or up, chat? You'll get protocol. <clears throat> so just a uh, sample that said, "Come on." I actually don't know where I found this. No idea where I, uh, where I got this from. Surely it's just a splice sample. Okay. And uh, so we get to the first drop. So, like I said at the beginning, uh, this is uh, a very modified version of a drop that he Paramount sent my way. Let's uh, retrieve the link from this and play it because he sent me. <clears throat> um, there it is. Ooh, I'll find that one actually originally. Yeah, as you can hear, it's completely different. Uh, it does bear some resemblance. Yeah, but like the main bass is yeah. there, though. Okay, so the original, that original ID, uh, which was ba which was sort of like based off of Venator, but like mm. at 150 and not triplet was around July of last year. Oh yeah. <clears throat> so right. yeah, it it's started around then. Right, and then what uh, what uh, I got is his stems, for example, and I brought it down, a whole tone. And I basically made it F. And then what I did is uh, I took this and I frick shifted it. Right, yeah, so uh, it's got a disperser, frequency shifter, a uh, bit less of a release, so it has like more attack on it, OTT to compress once again, and then some EQing. So this would be the original, and then with the chain.
Right. So, Massive yeah. change. Massive change. So a couple of vital growls. Let's see if I can fetch the tins that I made this from. Okay, so here's one of them. In fact, I think I made this on on a stream. So if you guys are a subscriber, you can watch the entire the the entire thing of like how I made this. You just have to like find that one stream. That's one of them, and this is the other one. And so basically what I did is I started to record with Edison tons of like variations of the same thing. So I just went like twisted a ton of knobs and I ended up with like a 10 minute long sample. And uh, I picked up the best bits from each and then added some harmonics on top, some pads. <clears throat> and these are some bleeps from Spider Mode as well. Yeah, and I've, I've used those sounds like I've recycled those in so many different tracks. So right, no, I tend yeah, to recycle like a, a lot too. Just for yeah, the... it just it makes the workflow so much easier. Yeah, some more synths in there. Razors from a hypernova again. And then I used a plug from the Bejeweled soundtracks. I sampled the Bejeweled Ooh. plug here. Oh, let's see. That's the whole thing. And I sampled it so when you stop, the sample stops as well, so it doesn't keep playing. Sergey stars in June. Thanks so much for that follow. And uh, I basically did a small variation of the motif that we got here. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. And the same rhythm. By the way, the growls here also share the same rhythm. Ba -ba 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 -bum -bum -bum. So that's one neat detail there. The chords are basically super verb with some silent sauce on top. Uh, actually, no, this is serum. I do have silent sauce, but I think these are used in the breakdown. So, th so this one in particular is serum and super verb, and then obviously subways. Um, both Serum and Vital, I mean, at first you might think they're, they're very similar, but I think Vital's wavetables, like the stock wavetables in there are oh, yeah, they're really so, good. They're, so much, the stuff. they're hmm. so much better. They're so much better. Like they, like you take Vital and you take one wavetable and Isle Bridge just stopped working for some reason. And now, and now FL is going to crash for some reason. Beautiful. Or is it not going to crash? <laughs> It works. <laughs> it, it just said like here, I'll bridge.exe just stopped working. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what else could go wrong in, in this stream? So I, think, I think so far we're good. <laughs> but yeah, you could just take vital and you take like one wavetable or two wavetables and it instantly sounds good. You, you don't have that with Serum. And also vital's free. So if you don't have it, go get it. It's, it's it's free. It's amazing. And uh, here's a yeah. rim shot snare from Hypernova, also I think. And uh, then some glitch fills. And then which is just a resample thing. Yes, do import the wavetables from Serum. That's what I did. Right. And with massive uh, wavetables as well. And uh, here, this uh, these next state bars are basically a copy paste of the first. But with the melody on top. Which works really well, in my opinion. Like, there... it complements the basses so well. <laughs> right. Oh, so this is where I use the rest of the come on sample. All right. Add some high pads going into this. Let's see it in action. This. And then some more. 
I'm, I'm sure this is a different version of the same like core sound since it's a different yeah. stem it appears as a different color that that must be because it's a different audio file <clears throat> More it might be the mode. second drop version because there were. I remember exporting two separate drops because there was a triplet version and there was right. a, like the first version that you might be. A little might earlier. be. It's it. It's very likely. This is a build up, uh, like freak shifted sample that I took from one of my IDs. That's also gonna drop this year. Not sure what it is. Well, I am sure. You just don't know. <laughs> well. If you've watched these streams, you do know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sample from an upcoming track of mine. Or vital mode. And then this is from both Ikara vocal pack, and this is uh, a pack called Slay Top New Vox, which has like this like weird, uh, like just generic women, like female vocals, but they work really well for chops. And that's where I got this from. <clears throat> and I have the the vital squelch. This is actually not how it sounds in its original form. This is how it sounds. So it's just a continuous sound. It's just that it has uh, a filter, and then it has a frequency shifter, doing all sorts of crazy stuff in in here. See all that. And that's all from the vital instance that I showed. So, uh, vital, that's all from here. That's for layering. And obviously, and this is Cytrans uh, bits here. Yeah. Because of the Cytrans uh, like thing that you taught me about, it, it was like a oh, Cytran C drop thing. Yeah, those are the original uh, Venator bass shots, actually. Right. A uh, little fun factor. And this is basically the same Super Saw break with a different pat layer, the vitals on top, and then the vocal chop. Uh. And then I did some more variations with this, so I chopped it around. And I basically have like this really long, whoops, really long sound, see, too. So I can just say, okay, that's the part that I want. And then for the next one, I want uh, this or that or whatever. And I'll reach out this in a way. That they, they have some sort of like um, tonal flow in a way. For those of you don't, who don't know, uh, this is a technique that AU5 does where he calls it a bass jam where he'll just do like a massive 10 minute uh, recording of one sound and then he'll just chop it up into little bits and pieces in another track and That's there right. you've got some like really cool stuff. That's right. One of the build up stuff. But I bet you there was a ton of you who knew that already. Oh yeah. And that's just with a pitch shifter, I think? Or just a frequency shifter? Where is the frequency shifter here? Oh, there it is. It's just on the instrument's bus. Which is I gotta very... say, that must be so confusing with FL. For, for those yeah. of you who don't know, I use Ableton. So Ableton has like different, a uh, really different way with automation. So I've, I've always found it really confusing with uh, FL's automations. Donation gang! Yeah. Up. So... There's the shifter. Okay, found it. Uh, F12, real quick. Just save on some RAM. Okay, going back to this, and this is another copy-paste, <laughs> shameless copy-paste of the first phrase, but with an uplifter, and, uh, the, and this time the melody has a piano layer. In typical some, Modus fashion. some more decorations. And piano goes away for the ending of the drop. <clears throat> it 
it's really weird how people oh yeah fl's <laughs> um, uh, automation is great or able people like oh it's so confusing <laughs> yeah no uh fl users will find ableton very confusing ableton users will find fl very confusing it's it's a fundamentally like um different way of working yeah. ableton i would say is more of a conventional like workflow like for example cubase studio one all share a very similar way to work mm. while Whereas FL, it's, it's it's like on a on a like workflow way ethic of its own. Yeah. It's like on its own bubble. Okay, breakdown from vital mode. Uh, so this is mostly yours. So if you if so if you want to explain something on yeah, of what's so going on here. I think the breakdown I made like the day after you did that first initial stream where you made the first drop, or at least most of the first drop. Right. And yeah, that part came together really quickly. So I wanted to do something that was sort of atmospheric because we just went through like a really intense first part of the track. So I thought, all right, it's time to just have a bit that we calm down with. So yeah, it's just a lot of different pads and arps. Uh, right. One of the bits I took were the original melody from the start and then just filtered it out and reverbed it. Right. Um, And then I wanted to go into <laughs> that chip tune part, which uh, then comes in later. Right. Uh. I actually thought it was very genius how you turned the main melody into an ARP. Into like, oh, uh, into more of a background element than a top element. And then there's this thing in the chiptune melody where you add another note to the to uh, to the main motif. Yeah, I thought it would be cool to like just uh, right. expand a little bit, not too much, but make it uh, so it's not exactly like it's right. repeating the exact uh, same thing. Not only is it so here, it's the same motif, but it's the chords that change. And by the way, they they change in, in the same way that the breakdown is going to happen later. So it's like dun dun dun, they're like D flat major, and then E flat major, and then F. And then there's this, which I thought was the best thing of this breakdown. I'm gonna see here. Right, so you see how this, oops, that, that would be the lead melody, but then what Vitamo did here, there is still this underlying tone, but now instead of it being the top melody, this is the top melody, he adds like one, one additional note, so he does, but there's still that, underlying scene in there which i thought was pretty genius <clears throat> it's just those small little changes which make a whole lot right. of difference okay let's talk about some weird stuff i actually don't know if 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 i've told if yeah if i told you this i don't know if you know this but on the deep pad what he did is some weird sound design thing which uh I don't think can be classified as sound design. It's it's more of an FL thing. Uh, the built-in EQ with FL has this thing where if you if you adjust it too much, it starts to make the pops. <laughs> so uh, you know what what I did is I went and I automated this in a brutal way so that oh it goodness. so that it would do the pops on demand well that's great and if you do it in a very uh if you do it in um in a if you adjust it like very finely you can get a pitch from that and then even more if you use a flanger It's like I'm exploiting a, a bug in the well, not not really a bug, more of a bad <laughs> bad VSD design. Yeah, uh, I actually thought you just changed the um that drone base. I thought, oh, that, that's cool because there's like a flanger texture to it. But I, that's I did not change it. Yeah, sample. That, that's cool. All right, so yeah. And Here's I another thing, actually, chat. We the whole time we worked on this track, we only worked through Messenger and through stems like there yeah. wasn't a single time where we were in a call 
to, uh, like working on this track. Yeah, no, the only I. The time we actually spoke about it was when we were working on the We Don't Play remix. That's the only time right, we talked about yeah. it. Yeah. We, uh, well, for, for one, I don't, like, I rarely use calls to work on, on a collab. I'd much rather use text. And then, mm. yeah, because then you don't have to sit through like half an hour of me trying to say words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, he knows. It can also be very <laughs> awkward sometimes where you've got one person sitting there doing all the stuff and the other person's just sitting there watching. Like, it's interesting to watch someone yeah. else's workflow, but then it can feel like you're not doing too much. So it's definitely better to work the way that we did, in right. my opinion, that is. Some people might might enjoy the other way of working in calls because I know people do that in Discord all the time. But yeah, whatever works works. On pads, I did boost the air a metric ton. So this is the the original. It had some resonances there. Oh, I've I've actually got a cool story about this actually. So Go the ahead. sample, the sample that's used there, um, is this. I this, the original sample is called Cre Creepy Atmos F. Because it's uh, got this like F uh, minor texture to it, and it was this. I I took some random sample. I can't remember what it was, but I stretched it out and added like reverb to it, and it created that. And I was like, <laughs> I think it was like in 2017 or 2018. I made that sample. I was like, and I've used it in so many different tracks. It's such a great sample. I've used it ever since. <clears throat> that so it was really cool to include that. That reminds me of a time where we got a donation on on a stream and we recorded the message and we i um um i like warped the sample a lot and it made for a sick growl and it was like what <laughs> what is this and then i ott the living shit out of it and that is the main growl on my 2020 song 2077 <laughs> oh that's sick it's it's the main growl a donation message turned growl. Pretty cool. So, I did some EQing on this. Make that, like, bell thingies on the top and pop some more and remove that. <clears throat> I might actually chuck that actual uh, original sample in the Modus Discord, or maybe even the Rushdown Discord, where Go after ahead. the stream's finished. And some effects. This is Vital Mode you're listening to right now, Ancient Observer. You need to be subbed for feedback? No! That'll be kind of unfair. Nice perks. And then we've got perks. Also, Mother Mode. And I believe these are drag and drop. Yeah, these are drag and drop. There's absolutely nothing in this. You can get the dry versions in the uh, sample pack, which is actually no longer available, as I just realized. <laughs> it was only available if you uh, did a pre-save on the pack. You can no longer pre-save because it's already out, so... so uh, I'm sure a bunch of you already did that, so you, you have that sample. There was like, uh, Harvey said, we ended up getting like 1,700 pre-saves. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's crazy. <laughs> it was, I, I was like... Okay, it's 1,700 pre-saves. Like, 1,700 people are interested in this. And, 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 like, I don't know if you know, but the song got, like, 2,000 streams on Spotify on day one. I saw that. That's <laughs> crazy. I've never seen that before. That's like, just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, no, I have I have just never dealt with those kind of numbers before. Like, on day one, at least. <laughs> iPhone, like unlock sound. <laughs> just on... Oh. Yeah. So iPhone, uh, crazy. unlock sound, and then the cheap tune. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, you got the uh, got the phone, uh, the iPhone opening lock sound in there. I had to include that since the track was called Color Ring Tone. And um, the chip tune melodies I actually wrote. Um, me and a bunch of uh, the Melbourne producers, because I'm from Melbourne in Australia. If you didn't know. Um, me and a bunch of other producers from Melbourne, we all come together sometimes and we do a thing called Prod Week, where we uh, go to like a holiday house or whatever, and we just work on music for like a week all together. And this oh, section in particular nice. is what I worked on the last one we did in November. So, got some good memories from working on that. That's cool, because we don't, 
we don't have that stuff here. I'm usually very, 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 very alone in, in the danger here <laughs> when it comes to. Uh, that sucks, dude. I mean, at least it has a crystallizer on top. <laughs> yeah. Don't go wrong with crystallizer. Just look at that texture it adds. So. Uh, and some high pass. Uh, filtering. And the filter is only being applied to the to the send from from the crystallizer. So it's only this that's getting faded in. It's only the the amount of crystallizer effect that's uh, being low, uh, low pass in. And then the usual Torah verb like well and all that. Pads building up. And then some more arps. I did add some violins. And then some more vocal chops. Well, there you go. I never noticed the violins. <laughs> <laughs> you never noticed the violins? I never noticed that. I think oh, it's wow. I think it's because of the vocal, because the vocal is so present in that part. Right. Maybe. And the if yeah, if anything, the the violins, it's almost like they act uh, so like like uh harmony to the vocal in a way. Yeah. It acts as a voicing for the vocal. So it it's it sounds like it's just the vocal run through a through a like multi voice like vocoder. Hmm. And there's an FX. And there's the bass. And there's the drum. Obviously, lots of hats. Yeah, originally, and... the version that I had for the breakdown, it was only like a kick and snare. Right. <laughs> Just filtered through. But <laughs> I, I love what you did with like all the claps and stuff. It's so much better. We had to spice up some of the things, add, add more layers, stack layers. Not like that one guy who would have said, you only have 100 layers. If you have 100 layers or more, this, you got bad production. <laughs> all right, so. Stupidity. The part absolutely everybody here has been waiting for, the phone beeps. How do we do the phone yeah. beeps? Uh, it's going to take 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> because the phone beeps are straight up a sine wave. <laughs> All it is. Because DTMF, like phone tones, are sine waves. Like that is it. And then I did some micro pitch, like fine tuning here. So if I go here. Uh, you'll see if I go to note fine pitch. See, there is some micro like pitch adjustments here because if I play this without any any adjustments, it sounds a little bit more flat, less natural, less less like it comes from a phone, right? Sounds a little bit more iffy, right? Not quite like phone. So I had to like uh, down pitch, not pitch some samples. So it sounded a little bit less, like more microtonal in, in, in a way, which is what phones do. It and sounds then, much more accurate. Right. To like the the original, what we're trying to replicate. Yeah, uh, what, um, what I did is I looked up a page that had DTMF tones. Uh, the online tone uh, generator, and it has a section called DTMF's... Uh, DTMF dial tones, and it's basically a phone like numpad, and I went through these, and I recorded these, and I I inserted an EQ and I analyzed the well the space and the intervals in between. So I I did some research to make sure get that accurate sound. It was as accurate as possible. And then, okay. okay. <laughs> clap going into a... This clap might make into Ultra Nova, who knows? Oh, uh, <laughs> never mind. It's actually the Hypernova clap. <laughs> uh, sometimes I change a sample so much that I, I no longer recognize it. <laughs> uh, okay. 
All right, so what if I told you that this drop is entirely inspired by Zalen's uh, 2014 song? Uh, let's see. Zalen's Ultimate. Ultimate. What? <clears throat> no way. The Dude, the, the second drop is like... <laughs> The second drop from Ultimate is like identical. Yeah, but like I actually messaged Paul and I was like, after like once I finished the breakdown <laughs> section, I was like, you know what we gotta do? It's like we gotta do something exactly like Ultimate. <laughs> and that's what we did. And that's basically what we did. It's the same I mean, chords. It seemed, it seemed right to do that because, you know, Xylent is such a big inspiration for both of us. Right. So it, it just seemed right to do it, especially and in a collab. And we still kind of managed to make it our own somehow. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it even has the like sus4 chord in there. Yeah. The exact same set of chords. But we just did our own twist to it. So it's basically... This is where the sullen sauce come in. And then super saw, um, super verb, sorry. And then some growl layers. Oh, vital. So yeah, that's, that's vital again. And then there's some stuff, I think here. Yeah, so this is the tail end of a sample called for sauce that I have in Hypernova. Which basically, if we on low pass it, so it has the like sub tail end in it, and I basically, Ooh, very nice. I basically just got an I, I low passed it. I just had that sub bass in there. That was very, uh, very useful as a like leftover. So it's like fading out in a way. And then uh, on the top, we have the same variation that was here with the pluck from the jewel thing. Whoops. Um, here, ba -da -ba -da -bam -bam -bam. that same melody is now in uh, the breakdown part, but it has two layers. I think it is. It's a double octave. And then there's these. Uh, Arps. Right. So these have an automation. Uh, these are from Serum. The high pass, obviously. And then uh, I sent them to two locations. To a bus. And then to a send with a crystallizer on it. So I had the dry layer and the... So that's... that That is the dry layer. And then the wet only. Well, you can't really listen to it because it's not. <laughs> Say, if I mute the send, it doesn't work. Yeah, no, if I mute the send, it doesn't work. But Yeah, you have the dry and the wet separately. And what that allows me to do is high pass the wet signals separately. And adjust the volume of the wet signal separate from the dry. And then it's just... A matter of getting the high end adjustments right to fit it in the context because in the top end there's also these saws and you've got to like make some space for the saws and the arcs and then some up some uplifters and then the sub is actually like going down Bam. make make some for some pretty very interesting, like, stop, low-end movement. Mm. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. More variations of the same, like, vital squelch growl thing. ba 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 bum I really wanted it to, like, make that bam bam bing bum like, sound to it. So I just went for it. ba ba bing bum It sounds very, like, vocal in a way. Yeah, very, uh, very vocally. Mm. And then one more growl in there. And then some freck shift to grow um pat like layers again. Wow boom.
That <laughs> this is like so silent. <laughs> Square wave, but with a pitch automation, like very, very, very short. So it has like pew effect. And then with an all pass face, which is basically the free version of Disperser. And it's arguably even better because it has more controls. <laughs> it has four knobs instead of two. <laughs> And then uh, that, the square has some reverb going into it. Bam. You know, that. Very useful for the, for the chord swell here. Whom. This is a Xylen Womp. I think this is from Power Pack 2. Yeah, it's Power Pack 2, yeah. Whom. I basically just did some low passing to it and some delay. Boom. The Pal Pack sample pack is <clears throat> great. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Then, here, what I did is I bounced uh, this, I bounced into a single sample. So I could then do a tape stop here. So I used this. Uh, Delay here and use that as a like well bridge for the second build up. And I have all this same sample as the the beginning, so that fade in there. Now it's here again. And this is a sample from um, Paracosm, a song from 2020. And then uh, a sample from Hypernova, I think it is. And then a uh, stop drop going up. Going down, actually. With reverb. A sub with reverb? Paul, what, what? were you thinking? What were you thinking? <clears throat> it's illegal. <laughs> I mean, if it works, it works. Uh, it's still... <laughs> it's it's still mono, though. I haven't... haven't. <laughs> and then there's a clap. And a crash. Going up. And that's all there is about this bridge in there. That. Zapper here. Boom, bah. Same motif as the, as the first build up. But now we switch to triplets. And now, uh, well, uh, whereas on the first build, we had the tape stop followed by a vocal chop. Now we have the tape stop and the tape start. Same build up, but in triplet form. Okay, second drop. So again, this is mostly yours. Occur to go through yeah. some, some of this. I've actually got the Ableton file open, so uh, oh, that's nice. What I did for it was I took the or the original uh, drop samples and then laid it with some other. Uh, trancey sort of sounds like I have the original Veneta bass layered there and what I actually did was um, I took um, all these bass layers and uh, put a vocoder on it in Ableton and used a pad sound uh, to almost give it like a like that color bassy sort of tone to it um, and then put an LFO tool on it uh, to make sure that it the sound wouldn't like uh, what's it called? Like, not have like a really long release, so it was like a really nice, short, sort of attacky sort of uh, sound. Right. And yeah, what else is layered here? Of course, there's all the um, the slap bass and the uh, the acid bass, which I've started using in some of my uh, new stuff, which I'm working on currently. The Axi bass um, touch was cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm so I'm so happy that I was able to fit that <clears throat> in there. Um, yeah, it just worked really well, and of course, all added like some really nice, uh, like uh, textury sort of reverby plucks in the background, which made it sound so much better. Um, what else is here? Of course, there's like all these little uh, like chip tune fills and stuff. Uh, right. yeah, what more can I say? I also chopped up a lot of the um, or the original drop. Like, there's all these glitches uh, that I did to like make all these little transitions between the sections. Um, and originally, when we go into that uh, that sort of, like, Britom sort of drum beat, 
Originally, it just kept on going uh, four on the floor, but doing the um, the halftime switch was a really cool way to like make it uh, keep it going and not make it the same throughout the whole uh, section there. Right. <clears throat> right. So basically, what I did here is I took his stems. I barely chopped anything because it was already pretty good. The, the flow that was in the second drop. And what I did is just add more layers and like spice it up. So, for example, in the background pad, he had a, a steady line. I did some transgating to it so, uh, instead of this. It would sound like this. And then I had an auto. Actually an AU it's actually an ASORA sample, but don't tell him that. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh god, my launch pad has crashed. <laughs> old launch pad mark too. Dude, gotta, my like, the, rely on like the 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 um the original launch pads have like the worst USB connection ever. Like I've got the same one, dude. It's you, it's terrible. You you move them a single millimeter and not only does it cease working, it can also it can also freeze your, your DAW. <laughs> It can also make your dog freeze. I have no idea what they did with the drivers, but please, Novation, fix your goddamn launch launchpads. If you're gonna buy a launchpad, buy the new ones, because they most likely don't have that problem. Right. No, and that's true, actually, because I've got <clears throat> one of the newer ones, and it doesn't have that problem. So yeah, don't buy the older versions. <laughs> and then I have an autopan here, which basically just makes sure of 12 once again. Now it's uh, more fluid. Basically, it, it just makes sure that it goes like from left to right and makes some space for the grouse on on the center. And uh, chords, uh, no chords. There it is. Chords are basically just drag and drop, just with a tiny high pass here, because they did half a tiny bit of bass. I already had. I think my bass those here. ones. I think those ones I used like some of my own layered with some xylent uh, samples to create those ones. Right. And as for the bases, most of them are from from the first drop, just in triplet form and with some uh, and with some additions like the flat bass and the accent bass here. You know. And then for yeah, the accent bass I made in uh, I think I made in Serum not too long ago. Right. And uh, the slap bass is just a splice sample, which I spent like an hour trying to find the perfect slap bass samples <laughs> on splice. But it was I can relate to that. I found, this, I I found this perfect that. sample pack of just slap basses, and it's amazing. <laughs> um, may I may I recommend a plugin that's basically tons of slap basses? It's called Moto Bass. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, and it's basically just this. It has tons of like bass styles, and you you can either have like a slap style or a normal. Here it's like you can slap, pick, or finger, and there's like muting options. There's, there's like noise, noise option, uh, noise options. How many like if you wanna add one more string? You can probably. Oh, yeah. that's sick. You, I gotta check you that can out. Add... Uh. I believe this is what I used for uh, an upcoming track of mine. <laughs> I actually can't say yet because it's coming like next month. But <laughs> Modus Bass. I, I, I knew somebody was going to bring that up. I, I, I fucking knew it. And then basically for the super sub break, I just did the, the exact same as in the first drop. But with this ARP added on top. Of course, the ARP comes from the melodic break. It's the same ARP. Just not very, like, fast. Series of notes. And then I felt inclined. I had to do my own, like, drum pattern first. I did use Varamo's hats here. And then just for for the sake of mixing and stuff, I, I use the same kick that I've been using for the rest of the track and some of the same hats for the sake of keeping it all like from the same like pool of sounds in a way. <clears throat> I 
I do find it interesting how you have the um the drum group under all the basses and synths. Right. Because I have the, the complete opposite in my project files where I have the drum group at the top and then yours is goes like down to like that, synth spaces. Right? That's yeah. yours. Right. Right. I, I think it's just because like in like music school, like the teachers are always like, Oh, you have to have the drums always at the top. Uh they so, all like, they yeah, yeah. Um, they told me the the same thing when I was in in my internship in Valencia. They told me, yeah, no, we we tend to do the drums up top, but uh, uh, but like it kind of it's it's more of a thing about like what type of of music you make because yeah, uh, it's just personal preference. Yeah, and, 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 yeah, and like how you think of it, like how like for example, um, I think of it as the drums, uh the growls resting on top of the drums like that's how i have like my mental image of it yeah so i like uh i like to think of it of like this goes first and then i'll figure out the drums <clears throat> and then we went half time on this added a clap there and another clap Added some remnant of the original melody there, ba -bam -bam. and then this is one of my favorite parts. That little uh, melody change up, right? To be honest, there's like not much of like new stuff here. It's just uh, reusing the same sounds from earlier on in the track. So say we have most of the same sounds from the buildup. Those are all taken from the buildup. They're just used in a different way. And that's another one of the same sounds. And then we use that in the in the melodic break. So. And then the vocal chops, but re-chopped to triplets. Use some of those like sigh bass hit. <laughs> They're even being like pitched up. So basically this has the shifter in here. Let's see. It goes up and then down. And then this is the exact same phrase as the end of this. But just, sort just of doing that sort of um But again, it's in poetry triplets. Poetry kind of thing. Right. But again, it's in triplets and this time the drums have a, a trap snare. These hats have not been high passed. What, Paul? It's you the are perfect sample. You are dumb. That is so much better. Why didn't I do this? <laughs> I mean, at least we you guys didn't now, notice. <laughs> we, we have, have to, to now re-release the track. Just we, to make that one little change. We, 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 we have to like re re-export like the mixing stems for for this and redo the. Sorry, Chime. We, we screwed up there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Color track. Ooh. Right. That, I'm surprised not many people have done that. <laughs> the sample's literally called overused trap snare because it's like <laughs> I have seen it in every trap song ever. This is that that one snare everybody keeps coming back to. And that one last reprise of the melody, uh, which, by the way, still has that same underlying. Uh, ba -ba -ba. But now it has a top line. Then has some like quick bleepy bloops. And uh, rear. Yeah, rough down for life. <laughs> That's good.
Then I believe I took these from your breakdown. So it's just like... Bop, yeah, it's the same breakdown bop, stuff. Copy, paste. And, uh... In a way, this track is fairly, like... More, uh... It's very, um... Like, narrowed down to the core ideas. It's, like, very, um... Functional. In a way. Yeah. Like... The drop starts very early. It has like three drops in in four minutes, and it's just like there's there's not much. Uh, we didn't branch out too far from the the original idea in later drops. We we stuck to the to the main motif quite a bit. Yeah, <clears throat> it's it's using repetition in a pretty good way, not just going oh yeah we're gonna take the same bits and just reuse them again, just copy and right. paste. Right, recycle. Like we, we but added enough changes to a point where it's like the the changes make them like it's like what's the word they the parts the the different parts make uh, are their own they have their own identity compared to yeah it's like the re parts. refashioning instead of repeating in a way yeah and then uh, obviously the best part of the song please yes. check your mailbox <laughs> Has arrived. I literally just found this sample on a site called SoundSwap, and it has like a library of free samples, but they're like super random. You'll find like this, and then you'll find a sample of uh, of of a uh, US like radio 1940 show, and then you'll <laughs> find a, a sample which is a religious speech, <laughs> and, 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 and it's just, just like these weird thing and well i found this next to an aol sample uh i was actually going to add the you got mail sample but uh we thought of it and we ended up uh not doing it because probably copyright <laughs> for copyright reasons, There's actually i was i was going to use a um one of the links i actually sent you the second one um is like an, right. uh, the an earlier version of the second drop and i used a sample of uh, of like one of the sidemen YouTubers screaming, uh, "Get off your phone!" <laughs> Which is, it sounds really obnoxious, but I was like, "Yeah, I don't think this is gonna work." <laughs> Should have used that. Well, uh, uh, we were also like going to use the Pee Wee Herman, like I'm trying to use the phone sample, yeah. but Space Lasers had already used it, so <laughs> yeah, it, I think it would have been a bit too on the nose if we did that. Yeah, okay, so so this is what the early version of the second drop sounded like. You'll hear that the bases are a lot more open. And it keeps going on corner four. Right. Yeah. Get off your phone. Please check your mailbox. I, I feel like it would have been just, it was better just to have the, the one comedic part at the end rather than right. having it a little earlier on. New message has arrived. And it's still funny this. that that exists, but yeah. And then the clown horn. I literally just yeah. ripped it off of YouTube. <laughs> Going through, through the master now. Oh, uh, we, we can actually do that uh, through the mixing project. So, uh, I exported. This is something I don't know about because I didn't see. I didn't see the master. Like this is this is the thing with the master. Like Paul sent me like the like the, one of the final whips. I'm like, oh, I'm really excited to hear what the mix and master is. And he's like, oh, funny you should say that. Sends me the master like straight away. <laughs> yeah, no, because like I had already been mixing it when like the the moment he was saying that he was like, oh, guess what? I I've, I've already done the mixing and 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 mastering. You didn't have to ask. Uh, so basically what I did is just uh, some maintenance in the song. I've exported some of the general, like, group, like, bus stems. So here you'll find, for example, all the instruments except the sub. Here you'll find the sub only. This is the, the kick alone, the snare, the hats, and then the crash all on separate bus stems. That's interesting, because what I do is kick. I'll do, like, 
all the bases in a separate group, all the synths in a separate group, all the effects in a separate group. So, yeah, right. it's interesting that people have a different way of doing their mix downs. That's the snare. That's our at bus. This our our crash bus. What's a color ringtone? It's a ringtone that is color base. It's That's essentially uh... what it is. <laughs> so let's see what I did in the the instruments bus. Basically, some EQing to bring out the bass a little bit. Make room in this one thirty hertz for the harmonics of the of the sub bass to take that space mostly. And then I did some glue just for catching some of those uh, like very nasty peaks like say for example like all this this had to be brought down so see how, how here it's mostly stable and then here there's a ton of peaks that's where i use the glue take care of that without hurting the dynamics too much sub i basically absolutely slammed i used a limiter on the sub because the sub has to be a sausage right that's that's just the that's pretty much the best way to mix a sub is to have it be as volume, like as normalized as possible. And that's and what adds up to your low end and increases the the amount of luffs or the luffs levels. Right. This was pretty unnecessary, but I still did it. I, I did sixteen times over sampling just to make absolutely sure there was no, there was nothing else happening on the sub. But the frequencies that are that are on this file, there's nothing else being added to this file in, in the form of aliasing. So and uh, then I absolutely slammed the sub with the limiter. And I did do some dipping in the 80s because it sounded a little bit boomy here and there. Uh, as for the kick, oh let's see, I did nothing on the kick actually. Snare, nothing on the snare either. Uh, <laughs> The hats, I did do some stuff, like here, some individual hits, I made them unique, and I lowered the volume just on, like, say, a few snippets here and here and, and there. So, say this is too loud, I'll do this, make unique, and then lower the volume just on, on that snippet. And that's how I'm, like, noticing, like, sniper accuracy, those, like, volume inconsistencies there. And the crash, I believe I do have some stuff on it, I do have... This mastering, well, mastering grade, you could say EQ on it. It's just a bit of an air boost and making absolutely sure there's no, there's no low end on the on the crashes. <clears throat> How long did it take to finish it? Um, I mean, when it in terms of the the actual track itself, it probably only took us I don't know a few weeks maybe. I'm not sure about the mastering. Paul could probably speak to that, but yeah, it only took us I don't know a good few weeks to. I can tell you about. I can tell you about the master. This master took 39 minutes. Because <laughs> it was already pretty oh, yeah. good. It was already pretty good right out of the gate. So it's like the perfect master is the one that you don't have to do because the mix is already perfect. Right. Yeah. And um, we got pretty close to that. And we only spent 40 minutes mastering this because all we had to do was some peak cutting. And that's basically about it. <laughs> And then uh, uh, I have this automation, which is adjusting the input gain on the limiter as we go. So basically what that does is uh, on the drops, it's going to have the maximum loudness. And then for the non-drops, it's going to bring that down a little bit. So as you saw there, it's 9.55 and now it's a little bit. It's basically a full dB quieter on the intro than it is on the drop. So let's see it going down. And now you can't hear it. Because something funny going on, probably. Oh, it's muted. God damn it. <laughs> Rookie producer mistake. Total time of uh, I mean, from the, I mean, it technically was started in, what was it, July of 2021. So, what is that? Like, <clears throat> hold on. One, two, three, four. It took about like one, two, three, four, five, six months in total. We we finished it around December. Right. But I'm not too sure, like, combined all the hours it took to make the track. Because we did work in two separate project files, and Ableton doesn't tell you, at least I don't think it tells you, the amount of time it takes to work on a project file like FL does. Which sucks. 
Right. Did yeah. That. Sorry. Sorry. See that? See that? Input game volume going down, and it'll go up. Come the drop. Down, go up. And it's gonna go down again in the breakdown and in the mid build up again and in the in the third build up again and the third drop is gonna go up again and back to the same level as the intro or the ending so yeah and then we had very very subtle EQing things just making sure the tonal balance is right where I want it the imager basically to mono out the lows and make sure there's no like weird stereo imaging things going on had to center out some of the low mids and all that making sure it didn't go red aka uh mostly out of face <clears throat> and the low end mostly Ooh. centered when i mean it took like started in july like the original original idea started in july right like when we like i don't i think august was when it like the the initial idea of the melody started and that's when it really took off but as early as July, because that's when like the the base, the like the what we used as the base started. Right, and then I have some more multiband dynamics for again more of that P cutting. You'll see it's very subtle. It's uh, mostly acting on the bass, and even then it's like only one dB at most, pretty much of P cutting. Just to make absolutely sure there was no peaks, like no nasty peaks going into the limiter. So it wouldn't have to uh, go down too much and cause some of that dreaded um, pumping stuff. And then I added another limiter, but this time only for the true peak stuff. So the so this Pro L will take care of the analog domain. Basically, just uh, basically just make sure that the ceiling just stays at minus zero point one all the time. And then I have a loudness meter to measure how loud. How loud am I getting this? And the mastering project is really starting to get to my computer now. Just having all these like uh, VSTs on 16 times over sampling probably killing my my computer yeah. a, a little bit. But yeah, that's that's probably everything that went into color ringtone. So uh, yeah. yeah, we did we did work on it off and on like and at the same time as we were working on it, we were also working on the we don't play remix. Yeah, pretty and much. other and also our own personal stuff at the time. So yeah, it was off and on. If we, if it was every single day since July, that would have been insane. <laughs> oh yeah, no, pl please no. We mm, we tend to work on stuff on and off. Like for example, Vital Mode High University and things to worry about. It's like mm. no. yeah, like I, I had know. exams and stuff around like November. So yeah, that was definitely mm, yeah.